Ned stood atop a mount looking out over the Wolfswood. The sight was new, but the familiar smell of the north remained. His dragon roared overhead. It also felt familiar to him. Eddard could not remember their origin. This dragon has always been his dragon. The lack of a memory of their bonding didn't seem too abnormal to Ned. Being in the presence of his beast was the only normality he knew. Ned attempted to call out to him, but his words stuck in his throat. Did his dragon have a name? Eddard could not remember. This felt odd and even more abnormal now. Slowly, a blizzard had wrapped itself around Eddard and his dragon, if he could call it his. The dragon put himself into a dive and disappeared behind the trees. Eddard slowly approached that same tree line, still trying to remember its name. Through the wind, snow and trees, Eddard kept searching. A voice then echoed in Eddard's ears. Ned spun on the spot. His alertness heightened. His dragon growled, but he could not sense the direction. The growls surrounded him, much like the voice. It wasn't unfamiliar, but he could not quite place it. He concentrated, preparing for the voice to speak again. Ned wanted to know if the voice was in his ear or inside his head. Ned's eyes welled as he heard his mother's voice speak again. The dragon rose over the trees and bent down towards Eddard. The forest trees snapped under the beast's weight. The growls were low and the dragon's breath was hot. Eddard felt his heart beating fiercely, waiting for the voice to speak again. Eddard, be the dragon. <gasps> Eddard was then jerked awake, covered in a cold sweat as dawn appeared in the Lord's Chamber of Winterfell. Eddard was startled when he realized he was not alone. Omara, his blood rider, shared his bed to his surprise. She woke as Eddard startled her awake as well, but her mood did not seem bashful. For Omara was much more comfortable with nakedness than Eddard was, as proven by her approach of him. She wrapped herself around his sweaty form, but he did not reject her advances as he did not want to insult her. What woke my lord so violently this morning? She asked playfully. Eddard still wasn't sure how long she had been here. It was nothing. Just more of the same. Eddard answered as she playfully ran her fingertips below his navel, gently brushing up against his morning stiffness. When Eddard did not correct her, she took this as an invitation and fully grasped him at the base. This audacity was enough to bring about Eddard's shyness. Half expecting this, Omara rose to her feet before Eddard had to suffer the indecency of coming up with an excuse for himself. Lord Tarly has prepared the caravan. He wishes for your inspection before the ride for the last hearth. Eddard now remembered his father's order to repair and man the last hearth. His heart again dropped as he remembered the state of Lady Munda and the fate of her people. Eddard himself wanted to ride with John Tarly to the last hearth to survey the damage. Meister Ashmore would politely remind him that a Stark was always needed in Winterfell. He peered out the window high in the Winterfell Lord's Tower. A morning frost covered the fields to the west as the sun had yet to touch the ground. Eddard would have to soon produce some children so he could visit anywhere else in the north, something on the minds of both the man and woman that occupied the Lord's Chamber at the moment. Omara had clothed herself and stood in the doorway before turning her head over her shoulder. Lord Tarly is waiting for you, my lord, as do I. Eddard fell backwards back onto his feather bed, his eyes nearly rolling into the back of his head. There was nothing wrong with Omara. She had made her intentions obvious these past few months. She was beautiful, intelligent, kind, and as fierce and loyal as any young lord could ask for. Eddard could not think of a single reason why he shouldn't pair with her, other than the fact he just didn't view her in that way though he could not explain why. Within the hour, Eddard walked through the godswood on his way to the courtyard. Ned counted three direwolves guarding the weirwood. That was Eddard's best guess. Ned thought deeply about the voice he heard. He assumed it to be his mother's, Queen Daenerys. Whether it was her voice or his own memory of her voice was the question he was pondering. A handful of steeds were saddled and ready for travel, but were severely less in numbers than Eddard was expecting. Ned passed through the courtyard, 
and out of the north gate where the rest of the caravan readied themselves. The captain of his guard, John Tarley, would lead the caravan to the last hearth and return it to a northern stronghold. His father, the Lord Commander, did not specify as to why. What Eddard did know, the army of free folk, numbering in the hundreds of thousands, now consisted of Lady Munda, and apparently only her. Eddard's heart ached. She was the closest thing to a mother Eddard had ever known, and she had been accosted in Ned's kingdom, no less. John Tarley was briefing his lieutenants as their eyes shifted to greet the interim Lord of Winterfell. John Tarley turned to greet his lord with half a smile. Could I have a word? Eddard asked, though John would likely not refuse. Of course, Lord Stark. Responded Lord Tarley curtly. The pair strolled shoulder to shoulder outside of Winterfell's walls. I presume we should have the last hearth defensible within a fortnight. If Sir Hunt's estimate of the damage is correct. Revealed John, assuming this to be the topic Eddard wanted to discuss. Ned stared at his boots again, thinking of Lady Munda and how his father was dealing with the tragedy. The frost that was present an hour ago was reduced to beads of water clinging to every surface. The castle can be repaired, it is true, but my heart aches for the free folk that cannot. I wouldn't be the one caught betting against House Giant's Bane. John laughed, and this brought a slight smile to Eddard's face. I hear your mother has arrived at Eastwatch to greet your father. It's not a hard ride to Eastwatch from the last hearth. Eddard encouraged and John's face turned stern. Eddard had offered him leave to see his parents. His appointment as captain of Winterfell's guard was never intended as a lengthy endeavour. As the heir of House Tarly, his place was in the reach, which at the moment was extremely short on manpower. No other kingdom's struggles could affect the other six so significantly. Eddard's daydream meant he failed to immediately notice John's lack of an answer to his offer. My father failed the reach, against my counsel, my pleading. His own father would have disowned him over much less. He likely wouldn't want to see me until he recovers himself. John answered and Eddard felt frustrated at his retort. What Eddard wouldn't give to visit both his parents after just a few days' ride. Many would see Eddard's life as privileged, but an loving, albeit absent father, unknown mother and a stepmother tortured out of her mind made Ned much more than envious of John's position. Still, no amount of encouragement would convince John to lay aside his grudge against his father, a seemingly more and more traditional aspect of the Tarly men. Either way, you are welcome to ride for Eastwatch. Should you change your mind, I am sure Lady Munda would appreciate a visit, as would my father. I will return to fulfil my duties to the North Lord Stark. I appreciate the loyalty, John, but your place is in the reach and your parents need your support. I'd rather my father be deserving rather than in need. John finished and Eddard was worried he appeared visibly deflated. Omara now appeared on horseback, now fully clothed to face the elements. She approached the pair of men with a slight smirk. My lords, the caravan reports they are ready to depart on your orders. She reported as she dismounted her mare. Eddard embraced John as the friends separated, leaving Ned alone with Omara. He is still frustrated with his father. Omara asked the obvious question. Ned hadn't yet answered her before she continued. It would explain your own disappointment, my lord. Is it because he is leaving, or is it because you love him? Omara accused and Eddard was taken aback. Of course I love him. He's basically my brother. Eddard answered defensively as Omara mounted her mare and simply glared down at him. Of course, my lord. How silly of me. Omara answered sarcastically as she sped off atop her horse. 